I think it was a fantastic conference and uh, it reinforced my feelings about optimistic feelings um, about the euro and its future. I think that uh, uh, I had the confirmation here in the small setting of economists, lawyers, uh, political scientists, uh, experts, politicians, that the euro is forcing us to do something magic, which is uh, to talk to one another, uh, to uh, find compromises to get to know each other better. Uh, if you think about it, if we were to go all our, on our own to the value, for example, to exit the euro area, uh, we would not need to know each other so much. We would not need to speak so much to each other. And remember that this is part of the reason why we are here with this euro currency because we want a project of peace and um, a project of peace can only come if people talk and in a sense the fact that the euro is creating so many problems and is forcing us to solve them involuntarily is because of the euro that we are capable of uh, talking about these issues among ourselves. Uh, the second thing that to me is pretty clear is that and I've made so many mistakes as I was saying in the conference Every time there is a political election, I forecast that the euro is going to lose, that people are going to vote against the euro. And every time I'm proven wrong, take Greece, where a lot of people decided not to vote to avoid voting against the euro. After all what had happened in Greece, take Holland, it's another fantastic example. Take the referendum in Ireland. We all expected catastrophic outcome for the euro in this very bad scenario for the euro, and no. People really want this thing to succeed. And this is why they want to engage in a debate. And the final thing is obviously, as, uh, as Jordi today said, uh, if you are not at the table, you're going to be in the menu. And we should never forget <laughs> that this capacity to unify ourselves, it's in, own, it's in our self interest in a sense, also for future generations. If we want to sit at the table with the US and China, we can't go on our own. We need to go all together. There was a geopolitical project that was invented many years ago after World War II. It is now much more clear to us, we need to be at the table and not in the menu. And the only way to do it is to be forced to discuss. Having said this, discuss about what? discuss about all the potential mistakes and risks that we have if we don't do the right thing. We need to do the right thing, as Spike Lee was always saying. And what is the right thing? Well, the right thing, the right thing is to avoid, the right thing is to avoid being forced out of the Euro area because people are so unhappy that they say this is the only way to do it, meaning we have to fight recessions. Recessions are to be avoided at all costs, because it's not politicians that are going to drive us out of the euro. It is the people if they are unhappy and they have every right to do so. So politicians have the duty to stop recessions. Reforms are not going to be enough. Reform take too much time, the people can't wait, they don't see the solidarity in reforms. So we need a expansive policy. Which kind of policy? The ECB policy? The ECB policy can help, but it's not sufficient. It doesn't help enough. We need Germany and the northern countries in their own self-interest to be more expansive so that German workers can consume more, but at the same time that they consume more, Greek, Portuguese, Spanish, Italian firms can export more and reduce the pain of the recession. At the same time, we need to stop the stupid austerity in southern European countries. We don't need to do deficits, we don't need to be too expansive, but we certainly need to stop the restriction. If we are able in the next few years, and we have shown with the European Central Bank changing dramatically its course, that we can do it, that there's enough of an agreement to understand that recessions are a terrible thing that can destroy the euro, if we go one step further, 
and we can move in a direction, intelligent direction, of more demand coming initially from the governments, more public demands of roads, hospitals, universities, you name it, whatever it is that we need to restructure our infrastructure. Then, when we will be out of this crisis, the reforms will kick in. We will have time to have governments go back to where they were, but we will have saved the most important project for the next 100 centuries, the euro, and at that point, we will read the menu, and it will be a lot of fun reading the menu and deciding what to eat.